Welcome back guys, and on today's episode we're going to show you guys how to fit a door to an old liner. Before we get into fitting the door, we're going to actually have to order a door. And how we do that, we measure the length by the width, and you get a door as close as possible. When you are ordering, just remember some doors have a maximum you can take off of them, so bear that in mind. So our first job, so we're going to break this down for you, our first job is going to be getting this door into the hole. So we're just going to measure the opening from the floor all the way up into the corner. So whatever your measurement is, you want to then take five to ten millimeters off because you need a gap at the bottom and a gap at the top. That's a good starting point. So we're going to get our measurement 1975 and we're going to go and show you how to cut that quick. So now you've got your measurement, we've laid our door on some boxes or some trestles or some stands, whatever you've got. We're going to measure from the top of the door. So most doors you'll notice that there's a smaller section and a bigger section depending on the style. So we're going to go from the top with your measurement and we're going to mark the door on both sides with a nice sharp pencil. And then do the other side. Right, so then you've got your marks. What you're going to want to do if you've got a skill saw you're going to want to put your guide in, set your blade on top of your mark, adjust your guide so that it's in the correct position and slowly cut that off. We're lucky we've got a track saw so we're just going to buzz it off with that quickly. Right, so now that you've cut your door down to the height you need, let's go and see if it fits in the other way. Right, so now that you've cut your door down to height, you're going to squeeze it in the gap. And if you look down here, we're sat on something called wind bags. If you're going to fit your own doors, get some. They're super cheap and they're going to make your life super easy. So what you're going to want from here is some packers, 2mm and 3mm. So the hinge side, if you actually get a hinge and shut it so these are parallel, you'll see that that is the space that you'll have down the side when you close your door. So a 3mm packer, we've got perfect gap there, so we know we're going to have a 3mm gap down here. But because this is a finished door, here we're going to have 2mm and 2mm there. If it was a painted door, so you're going to paint it unfinished, use 3mm, it gives you a little bit more space for when you paint so the door fills out. So all we're going to do, we're going to put our airbags in, get some 2mm spacers and slide them in the top. So once you've got your packers in the head of the door, the top, you pump up these wind bags so they clamps down. So these wind bags, what they do, you pump up this little thing here and it just jacks the door up or it can hold it sideways. So they're a brilliant little thing to have. And now we've got it sat in its position. We're going to use the spacers that we talked about. So we're going to use the 3mm or the 2mm depending on your hinges. Make sure you buy good hinges. Don't buy cheap and I'll explain why. This is a decent set of hinges. This is cheap. Your door will end up an absolute mess if you use a cheap hinge. Get yourself some quality hinges. We've checked that. We're going to use the spacer. We're going to go round. So anywhere that we need to mark. So if we look here, we've got 2mm, we're fine, but if we use the 3 down here, we've got 3mm. So what we'll do, where it gets stuck, we'll put a little pencil line, and then we'll take that out, and it doesn't fit all the way up there, so we'll just hold that against the liner, and put a little mark there telling us that we need to take a little piece off of there. All the way down to our mark. So we're just going to take a tiny bit off that side and then we'll do the same here and the same on the top if you need to. We've got a 2mm gap there, a 2mm gap there but it's touching in the middle. We've got no gap here so we know that from there to there 
we need to take a tiny little section out with our packer. So we need to bow the top of the door. Because you're using an old liner, if it was a new liner, you wouldn't have to worry about this. And one last thing before we start planing and showing you how to do that. If your door doesn't go straight in the hole like ours has by chance, you'll hold it up against the door, get a, someone to help you hold it against the frame, and then you can just mark round the hole from the other side. Same process as what we're doing, but it'll be from the other side with a little helper. So let's mark this out and go plane it. Right, so now that you've marked your door, as you can see, I've put some lines so you can see it a bit more clearly. We're gonna start planing these back so that your door fits perfectly with the equal margins all the way around. Now I'm gonna be using an electric planer. You can do this with a hand plane. So if you've only got a hand plane, same process, you've got to plane it back to those lines. So we're gonna shoot as in now. We are cutting indoors, we're using dust extraction. If you can, cut outside, because obviously it makes a lot of dust. So we'll put the over on, we'll play this and show you the result. So once you've planed your door to size, either using a hand plane or an electric plane, you're gonna be left with some really sharp edges. So you're either gonna to wanna to get some sandpaper and just rub your hand over it, or if you get a DA or a little mass sander, anything like that, you just wanna take that sharp edge back off of there and smooth the door out. Right, so once you've planed it up, we've set it back on those wind bags and we've got our spacers all the way around, making sure we've got the same margins. Now we've got two mil up the top. Normally I would have a two mil space in here, but this lining's so bad, we've just moved up to three mil because it's the biggest we can get for this door. So we've got our space everywhere. We're, we're happy now. We are happy with how that door's sitting. Once you've got it to this stage, if you see a, a little gap and you're like, no, no, that's not right, get that right first before moving on. I'm happy with this now, so we're gonna take a super sharp pencil and we're gonna mark where our old hinges are cut at. If this was a new door, we'd measure it out, but because we're going into an old liner, we're gonna use the old holes, and we'll show you that now. So all we're gonna do, because this is an old liner and it's got old hinges chopped out of it, we're just gonna mark the top and bottom of the old cut holes, top and bottom. And we're also gonna add a third hinge because these oak veneer doors, they require three 75 mil butt hinges. We've got an old latch here because it's a very disgusting liner that needs repairing. So rather than make a mess here, we're just gonna adjust this hinge and I'm gonna bring it below there. I'm just gonna mark where that goes. And then once you're happy with your marks, we're gonna take it out for the final time and I'm gonna show you how to chop your hinges in. Believe it or not, you have done the hard bit. The hinges are not too bad and neither's the handle, which we'll show you. So these is a standard 75 mil butt hinge recommended for doors like this, three of them. So you've got your marks that we did earlier there, there and there. So you're gonna take your hinge and if you open one of these, you will see that one side's slotted and one side's not. This, this slotted side, I put on the door. So if you just fold it like this and line that slotted edge up with the edge of the door on your marks, you can either use a pencil and mark round, a really sharp pencil, or you can use a knife and cut around the edge. Because this is a hardwood, oak, we're gonna 100%, you should be piloting everything, but especially with oak, because it will split. We're gonna hold it in place, and we're gonna use, this is a self-centering bit, you don't need one of these, but they are great. You can use a normal pilot bit, and we're gonna drill three holes. And you should be left with something like that. 
We're then going to attach our hinge. So I'm being really careful not to over tighten these. So that's what you'll be left with. And from here, you're going to take yourself a sharp knife, or you can still use a pencil at this stage, but I use a knife. And we're going to carefully go around the edge. Remember, don't overscore this because this door's finished. There's no paint going on this. And we're just going to cut around that hinge. So then we'll take the hinge back off now. And you should be left with something that looks like that. So you've got your score mark there. You, if you've got chisels, I'll show you the chisels now. Or you can go and get yourself a palm router, which is an electric router. And I'll show you that on the next hinge if you want to use that method. And you could pick those up for like £35 now. So they're not super expensive. So for the chisel method, we need to mark the depth of our cuts that we're going to be making. So you can either use a marking gauge, which we're not going to be using because I'm assuming you haven't got one. Or you can use a simple combination square, set it to the depth of your hinge. And if you just sit that on the door, you can mark your depth. So that's how far we're going to cut our hinge into that door. So with a chisel, now that we've got our gauge and our depth, our size and our depth, you're going to take this flat edge of a chisel, because you have a beveled side, and you're going to put that, see that little mark you made with your knife, you're going to sit it in there, plumb, and just tap the top of your chisel, either with a mallet or a hammer, whatever you're comfortable with, until you get down to your depth. And you're going to do that on the whole perimeter of your hinge where you did that cut mark with your knife or your pencil. And another little tip, when you're chiseling along the grain of the door, so that's the grain of the door, you've not got to hit this even 10% as hard as when you're going across the grain. So if you've hit that really hard and you just assume that you're going to do it, you're going to split the door straight enough. So take it easy when you're cutting along the grain. Well, you can see I'm barely touching that and it's, it's sinking into the door. So you have to be really careful when you change direction of cut. So we've cut around our perimeter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set our chisel on the door like so, about 5 mil, And we're going to chop down to our line. like so, all the way across that hinge. And then once you've done that, you'll end up with something that looks like this, and we're just gonna chop the line on the side there. What you're gonna do once you've chopped it, is you're just going to pair it off like so. So we're not using any tools at the moment. You can if you need to, but you just hold your chisel flat and you just wiggle it back to forth. Like so, picking up any of the timber. Right, once you're happy with your chisel, with your chiseling, take your hinge and check that it's going to fit. As fits perfectly. And now we're going to screw this one in and I'm going to show you the palm router method. Right, so this is a palm router. There are many, many, many different types and you can get them for as little as 35 pounds. They're corded, they work just the same. And what you're gonna wanna do is sit your hinge on the base plate and make sure your cutter is just flush with that hinge and then lock it in place and do all that with it unplugged or the battery out. Don't do it with it in because you'll end up losing your digits. Once you've got that set, we're going to put our battery in or plug it in, depending on what one you've got. And we're going to route just up to those lines. You haven't got to go all the way up to them. You can come just shy and we'll use the chisel to clean them after. Depends how comfortable you are with your router. Always keep the base flat on the door. That's the most important part of it.
all you have to do now is come along the edge with your chisel, put it in your cut mark, tap that down all the way round. You can get right up to this mark if you feel comfortable doing that. Or if you don't, you can just get close-ish and use your chisel. And once you get so far, you can just sort of use your body weight to push this edge off. That's what you'll be left with. Your clean edge where you knifed and obviously the depth should be perfect because you've set it on the router. And then just double check your hinge. Get your screws. And sink them in. So we'll do the last one. We'll get it hung and we'll show you how to chop out the hinges on there and then you lock. Right, so put your spacers back in the top now that you've fitted your hinges and we're going to jack the door back up tight against the top. And that is going to give us our finished position so that we can fold our hinges over like that and just transfer your marks onto the wall or the liner. Make sure these are accurate. All three ready to be cut in. Right, so, so at this point you want to remove your stops because we need to move the position of them because they were suited for your old door. We've just left them on to make our life easier but now it's time to get rid of them. So we're just going to cut through the 72 years worth of paint in the corners. Do that on both sides. Left, right, top, bottom, everywhere. We're going to take all of these stops off. Right, so once you've cut the paint, get yourself a big flat head or an old chisel like what I've got here. And we're just going to work this off. And this piece of timber here, as the name suggests, door stop. It's, it's where your door rests, it's where your door finishes. So we need to adjust it to suit our door. So we want these off. We just left them on so the door was easier to manage. Don't try and force it off in one go because you'll end up snapping it. So we're going to clean out these nails, pins, any that you might have. We're going to pull these out with some pliers or nail pullers and then we're going to mark out and chop the hinges out. So now you're going to put your hinge on those shoulders where you mark the frame from your door. Sometimes they'll line up with the old holes, sometimes they don't. Ours do not because they're slightly bigger hinge now because they're better quality. So we're going to have to chop these out so you can do exactly the same method as the door with a chisel or you can use a router. We're going to use a router just to save time so you ain't got to watch the same process. But it's the exact same process, chop the hinge out to the depth of your hinge and then we're going to mount the door. So once you've chiseled your hinges out, check that they all fit and put some screws in them and then we're going to final check, make sure the door still swings into the gap. If you are cutting new holes as well, just remember to use pilot holes because you can split the wood and we don't want to do that and we don't want to snap any screws either. So when you are checking to make sure everything's working fine, be careful now because we've took our stops off. You could push this too far and you'll rip it out of the frame or damage the hinges. So we just check carefully. It's all good. So then we open it up and now it's time to put the handles on. Right, so because we're using an old liner, you're going to have a striker plate. So that's this little metal piece that collects the handle. So what we want to do before we move on to fitting the actual handle is just quickly put two marks on our door, the top and bottom of that piece of the striker plate there. That tells us where our latch needs to go. Now that we've got those marks, you can use your wind bag or a wedge, put it under your door, give it a few pumps. And what that's going to do is keep that door steady for us while we quickly cut this out. So our first job is to mark the centre of where our latch is going to go. This is a 35mm door, pretty standard. They change sizes as they change from like fire doors and stuff like that, but this is pretty standard, 35mm. So I'm going to set my combination square to 17mm, it's 
but obviously you've got the thickness of your pencil. So if we mark it one side like this, in between our two lines, and then we do the other side, what that does is make sure we are 100% in the centre. And then we're going to measure between those two lines that we made from our original striker plate. We the 30 mil we've got here. Bring this across. And then measure up 15 mil or whatever your plate is. So that there is where we're going to drill our hole for our new latch. Right, now we've got the centre mark for that. We want to carry that round the sides of the doors. Like so. Now if you don't want to put pencil on your door, you're worried it won't come off, you can use a bit of masking tape while you're doing this. But this comes off a treat so I'm not too fussed. And what this line represents is the hole for where your bar goes through. So you imagine when that sits there, your bar goes through and your handle works off that. So easiest way to mark this, again, just use your combination square. Set, set it in the center of your hole, like so. Lock it off, sit it on the face of your door, and put yourself a little line, both sides. And that is all the marking out you're gonna need. So you've got a center hole on the face, and then you've got a centre mark on both sides of the door. So commonly used is a 22mm spade bit, which is one of these. You drill your hole and you square the hole up. Or you can get a 24mm um, Fosner bit, etc. But I'm not going to go into all that. Let's just assume all you've got is spade bits. The next size up from this on a standard set is normally a 25mm. And the problem is that won't clear your face plate. So you have to be really careful what size you select. So check your latch, but this is pretty standard. 64, 65 mil, I believe. So we put the point on our cross and we start drilling, paying special attention to being square and as level as we can get. If you drift off like this, you'll come out the side of the door and you can see we've got to go fairly deep here, like halfway down. So take your time with this, don't rush it, because of all that hard work, you don't want to ruin it after all that. So nice and easy. Right, so if you take your lock now, you'll see it fits, but obviously once it's squared up, it just, it won't have it. So all you need to do, is just square the top and the bottom of the hole and then your latch will slot straight in. So take your chisel like we've shown and you could just put it on the edge of that circle. So just remember when you're going down the grain be very very careful little bit at a time. Just remember when you're going down the grain of the door take it very very easy because you can split the door very easily going with the grain. So you can go a bit more tough when you're flying it flat, but when you're like this, take it easy because you don't want to split the door. And it's really not that difficult. And once you're through that veneer, that oak, that hardwood, you can pretty much put your hammer or your mallet down and you can just Use your weight like so, and just push it in and out, squaring it up. And if you think, oh, that's enough, then it's no big deal, just grab your latch. This one needs more, but I'll just show you. You could just go, nope, needs a little bit more, that's still too tight, and just take a little bit more off until you're happy with the fit. Right, so once you've got it in, and it's nice and free, and the latch is working easily, no stiffness, not binding up, get your pilot bit, get it in the centre, so don't drill it off centre, make sure it's centre of the door, and put yourself two pilot bits, 
And then what we want to do, we want to screw that in place, just like the hinges, we're going to run our knife around the edge and then either chisel it or use a router. We're going to use a router, but the chisel still applies, it will still work perfectly fine. Let's do that now. Right, so run your knife down the edge like we did with the hinges. Being super careful on the edges now because there's not a lot of material left with when you come to put these in, especially on a 35 mil door. Set your depth of your cutter, mind your fingers obviously at all times. And then we're going to route this out and then clean up the edges. So now we're going to clean up the edges like we have with the hinges. Remember I take extra care when you're working along the grain because it can easily split on veneer doors especially. Right, once you cut all your latch out and you're happy with the fit, just get that out of the way for a second. And the last job is to drill our two holes on each side. The spade bit we've just used, 22mm, for our particular handle, will work perfectly because that little section there needs clearance as well as the bar because it sits past the plate of the handle. So all you're going to do with this, you're not going to drill all the way through because you're going to smash the veneer to pieces. You're going to start on one side, again as level and as square as you can to the door. Once you're through, come back out. And then you just drill through the other side, being extra careful. And that's your lot. So, time to start putting everything together. First things first, we put the little latch in, lag salt. Make sure it's still operating. Next comes your bar. Some of these you have to cut down, but normally they're all right. Depending on your handle set you got. And then once you've got all that together, you can start putting on your handles. So the way I center these handles, like these lever handles here, is I get a combination square and I just adjust it so that the gap touches my square all the way down, top to bottom put that on the floor while holding it, get your uh, pilot bit and pilot the door and then it's just a case of putting in your screws so line it up with your pilot holes you'll have a fill for it, put the other one in Now, if you're not comfortable with a drill, you may want to do these with a hand screwdriver because you can bend these handles in because they're only thin. Still works. So then we'll do the same on the other side and we'll check their fits and then we'll do our stops. Last job and you are done. So take your old stops or you can replace them with new if you want to. We're just going to use these old ones for now. You push it up against the door while it's latched close. We're going to start at the head and I've put a credit card or some kind of card in between the door and the stop. And that just allows for a bit of expansion over the different seasons. And you can use either a nail gun like this or some panel pins will do exactly the same job. And we're going to do the same on the legs. I'm going to slide it into place and make sure we've got something in between so as the weather changes, it don't stop the door from closing. One last check before we let you go. Does it work? Of course it does. Does it rattle? No, it doesn't.